yeah hello <clears throat> so i don't really know where to start but i have been i've been having a lot of concern this these days and um, it seems that uh, i'm not the only one with this concern i have this firm belief that uh, it is only the church that can give us the needed direction uh, give us that we act like, like as a moral compass a developmental compass in this country and uh, i wasn't saying much about it i was just talking peripherally because i i don't know if i was saying the right thing but in me my god tells me that i'm saying the right thing until uh, i i started listening or i got in contact with uh, the dr sunday adelaja and i and I kind of understand that oh, I was not alone in this, and he was he is actually saying the truth. I uh, recently had a lot of stuff he was talking about. It is a program he he is always uh, having uh, every Wednesday, every Tuesday and Thursday or so, fixing Nigeria, and he talks about uh, the contemporary issues of Nigeria. And there is this particular one he's talking about. Um, what uh, he quoted the verse from the Bible, Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 16 to 18. I will read. He said, A country is in trouble, or woe to the country when the king is a child and his leaders feast all night long. But the country is fortunate to have a king who makes his own decision and leaders who eat at the proper time, who control themselves and don't get drunk when, uh, who, do, who control themselves and don't get drunk. When you are too lazy to repair your roof, it will leak and your house will fall in. Nigeria as it is, <laughs> we have, a, we have, we have kids, it, it literally the literally what that means according to my understanding is that when our leaders start behaving like children how, how do children behave children they don't have responsibilities all they want to do is enjoy themselves be dependent on their parents uh eat and cry and sleep and cheat and eat and play that's what children do you cannot differentiate what our leaders in all spheres in the church in the government circles in the entertainment industry everything about our leaders or the people that are the aim of affairs that we look up to they are just doing like children luxury eating looting happy partying dancing and all all sort of things that are not even what is godly, including our church. How do we, we are not critically thinking. We're not thinking nationhood. We're not thinking how it will better the life of our people. Because I don't see, I have always said that I, the church with the enormous resources and the trust, the church cannot be, if, if Nigeria happen to be like America, where people are not very religious, they have freedom, liberty, and everything. When you go to the Catholic Church in, in, in the United States, uh, in a church of capacity of about 500, you see lots just like 10 or 15 people going to church to attend Mass. But in Nigeria, we have so many people going to church. So we have the, 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 the pastors and the fathers and the bishop have so much a power so a lot of people that listen to them that will be able to they will be able to shape their life with their words but these our leaders are not exercising those powers what stops our church what stop the church from having a refinery because one of the issues we have one of the some of the issues we have with uh our petroleum products because we don't have refineries we, we have a lot of we we are we are importing so much fuel in, into the country and um, 
a lot of money is spent in subsidizing it to, to make sure that the, the price stays uh, to the level that we can afford. And um, so, so what stopped the church from having a, a private refinery? What stopped the church from from doing some basic things? What stopped the church from providing water? Okay, recently they distributed net good and fine. Those are the things that the church should be doing. And more, and more. The church can actually act like a watchdog to give direction because there is no I mean when I talk about I'm just talking about the church if including the the the, the Islamic Islamic uh, people the Islamic cleric they can also put the government in the northern part on their toes by speaking up we have we have uh, uh, Christian Association of Nigeria we have the Bishop Conference of Nigeria that have the capacity to call and meet presidents and talk to presidents that okay uh this is the policy we would like you to do these are the things we would like you to do and these are these are these are these are the benefit of these things and the government will not have no choice than to do those things because of the amount of people you control the church have not realized that with the, the number of people that they control is 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 a is a strength now and they are already losing it because people don't no longer believe in them I for one i am getting a little bit tired of of the control of the church because they've lost they love they lost their grip over the people because of what they are doing right now they do not have what is the vision what is the vision of the church now i think the vision of the church now is basically to to start um uh, i don't even know what they do now i don't even know what we do if we are been sent here basically to go to heaven and then there's no point we have been sent here to be the light of the world to be the salt of the earth to add flavor to the earth to be like god to act god to solve problems but we're not solving problems so ecclesiastic chapter 10 i said it all we have children, we have our leaders behaving like children. That is why we are just up and down, turning around the circle. We are not progressing, we are not moving forward, and nobody is saying anything about it. Progressive societies, they think, and they deliberately do things. What are the things that we are deliberately doing in this country? We are not doing anything deliberately. We are just allowing things to happen and we begin to react. We are not deliberately putting uh, effort to say, okay, we want to do this. We want to be in moon by 2022. We want to end this. We want to end poverty in five years. We want to, not some say, uh, we want to lift uh, people, five million people out of poverty. Uh, how? Do, what are the plans you have? What are the things that you want to do to ensure that you want to be distributing 30,000 naira to people every month? Is that you want to end poverty? So now we know that we have children in the M of affairs, and when we have that kind of um, things, people will get drunk, will go about uh, carrying siren and running everywhere, uh, sleeping in hotels, and uh, doing all sorts of things with the public funds and public trust. We'll go nowhere. So going forward, Going forward, this is a charge to every Nigerian and every uh, person that seen himself as a leader. You are not just a leader for yourself. You need to be a patriot. You need to start critically thinking. And um, we need to deliberately make efforts to do whatever we want to do to ensure that the next generation of people or the next generation of Nigerians actually will feel our effect. Because if we continue to do this, I'm sorry, I've been saying it that the generation will come that will cause us, they will erase our name from history. They will forbid us, they will forbid their children and their children's children from speaking about us. They will spit on our grave because we have wasted so much. Now is the time to start thinking out of the box. Not partying and drinking and, and, 
and having fun. We, we have not gotten to that level to start having fun. Eh, that my will call loss, that is an ungodly and a selfish attitude to be putting up. That my will call loss. What happened to sacrifice? What happened to love? What happened to patriotism? What happened to nationhood building? What happened to thinking and acting like you want to solve problems? I just listened to him and I, I, and I got the message and I felt I should share it. Thank you.